A cruise into the Norwegian fjords is a bucket list trip for many. With PO Iona also spending the entire summer season servicing these areas, it's also a very affordable cruise and seen as an ideal entry point for those new to cruising. So is this cruise the right one to tempt those new to cruising into taking the plunge into the world of cruise holidays? Well, we took first time cruiser and my own brother Matt with us on this trip. So keep watching to see our experiences on board Iona. We hope they'll help you make up your own mind about whether to take a cruise to the Norwegian fjords. So here goes. Our cruise on P&O Iona saw us return to Norway for the third time, but it was a chance to explore new port stops. For Matt, not only was it his first cruise, but was also his first ever trip to Norway. For Si and Matt, this was also an opportunity to fulfill a promise made to their late mother, that they would find somewhere with a beautiful view and raise a glass to her memory. And the omens were certainly good, as the night before we were treated to a stunning display of the Northern Lights from our home in Northamptonshire. Who'd have thought? So our adventure started with a train journey to Southampton. Train strikes caused such chaos on the day, but we arrived ahead of time. We met Matt at Southampton Station and headed for John Lewis at West Quay, time for a spot of lunch in the brilliant cafe. And then we nabbed an Uber that was big enough for all our cases, and we headed across the city to the Ocean Cruise Terminal. Check-in was effortless. Boarding passes shown, and through security, we were soon heading down the gangplank and found ourselves aboard this vast ship. The muster station was the first port of call, and then to find our cabins. And these were very fine cabins. Matt's single cabin was actually a twin cabin sold as a single. We were very impressed with the specification of the cabins and they'd been nicely cared for as well. Then time to mooch and explore, but first time to fill our empty bellies. The Keys has fish and chips, Asian food and a burger shack. And in the interest of an informative vlog, we tried one of each. So how's the meals guys? So it's our first day on the Iona and we're trying the food. I've gone for the Asian kitchen and I've gone for beef in a ginger and black bean sauce. So let me try it, see what it's like. Mm -mm. Oh, that's delicious. Really nice, really tender beef. I'd recommend this. Oh, that's really good. Come top for me. Smoker Matt was in need of a fag, so we made a beeline for deck 18 where the smokers areas are located. This was a lovely open deck area and we were treated to splendid views as we sailed out of Southampton Water and into the Solent and past the Isle of Wight. Then it was time to show off some gardening techniques in the golf driving nets. This was lots of fun. Then some ship exploring to do, or getting lost as we like to call it. We were well and truly lost, and then things got weird when we stumbled into the Tri Boo show in the Sky Dome. And if you've ever wondered whether you're living in a computer simulation, then this show will mess with your head, as we suddenly found ourselves inside the 1990s video game Street Fighter. Brain messed with, we got lost again, but eventually stumbled back to our cabin. Time to freshen up before heading to the theatre for the show. Called Digital, this show made great use of the sets and video walls deliver a light-hearted sing-along through the technological developments of the past 50 years. It was quite a visual spectacle. After the show it was time for the first cocktail to the cruise. So here's Matt with our official first cocktail review. Okay we're up in the Laguna Bar and we've got our first cocktail of the cruise and Matt has wanted a pina colada for a very long time. So Matt, pina colada review please. Pina colada review, out of 10 I'll give it an 8. Eight out of ten. Eight out of Anything ten. you like about it? The creaminess, the pineapple taste, right, and uh, the sweetness. What would it need to do to get a ten out of ten? Uh, a bit stronger with the okay. white rum. All right, a bit more white rum. Okay. More white rum in it. Yeah. Top review from Matt. Thank you very much. Getting late in the evening. Time to turn in. Oh, hang on. Matt's discovered you can still get food this late in the evening. Taking the meaning of the phrase elevens is to apply to the ship's Transylvania time, a further plateful of food was consumed before some fruitless attempts to see the Northern Lights again. Then it was time to return to our cabins, fill our drinks bottles and get some sleep. Night! Night. Day two was a sea day. A lie-in was on the cards, but was a cheat as the clocks had gone forward. Being late out of bed, we found the buffet breakfast rather busy. This meant we had to sit and eat outside, in the sunshine. P&O give everyone an hour's free Wi-Fi, so time to check in with the family over a cup of tea. And we began to wonder what was in the tea bags as other passengers began to look more and more like Wallace and Gromit. 
then needing to lie down, we found some sun lounges and chilled. As lunchtime loomed, we headed to the Sky Dome for a quiz. This was a fairly tricky word ladder, but was a bit of fun. Then some lunch before heading back to the sun loungers for some reading, chilling, and in size case, snoring. The sun was out, but we were heading north and we were feeling the cold. Sire and Matt went to watch football in Brody's pub, whilst I got myself ready for the evening. And Sai joined me after the match. You guys look posh. What's the occasion? Guess what? <laughs> it's fancy dress night. Yay! <laughs> or as p and like to call it, it's celebration night. It's actually called the BAFTA Television Award Celebration Night. There we go. They actually give us a free drink. We had to get a free glass of Prosecco or a mocktail, which Yay. is very kind of them. Looking <laughs> forward to that. So we're all togged up. And there was me thinking it was audition night for the next Batman movie, which is why I am, of course, dressed as the Penguin. And my glamorous wife is, of course, Vicky Vale. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> hey, look, we're looking forward to tonight. Uh, it's, Definitely. what, six, seven o'clock now. Uh, we were watching a match earlier on. I never saw so many tuxedos in a bar watching an Arsenal game. That was quite an experience. But, Eddie, anyway, we're looking forward to it, aren't we? And I'm looking forward to my all-time favourite, the silent disco. Oh, I forgot Yay! about that. All right, well, look, <laughs> check out and just see how we get on with a fantastic piano celebration. Like, we've we'll done a few of these before. Later, won't we? They're always interesting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it was the only celebration night of the cruise, so like most others on board, we decided to make the effort to dress up. And wandering round the ship, it was great to see everyone looking so glamorous, and we took the opportunity to get some photos. We hadn't booked any dining, so headed to the Horizon Buffet, which is also where those who don't want to dress up can also eat on celebration night. The chefs working in the chef's table venue paraded through the buffet on the way to commence their display. Like the rest of the crew on Iona, they were all smiles. After a meal, we headed to the posh crow's nest bar and enjoyed some complimentary bubbles before continuing to sample the cocktail menu. And it was time for another cocktail review. And with tonight's cocktail review is Desi. What have you got, Nay? Um, it's called a peach. No, it's not. What's it called? Here we are with take six. And tonight's cocktail review, Nessie, uh, what cocktail have you got tonight, Nelly? It's a plum sherbet gimlet. Well done. Okay, <laughs> and how is it? Um, okay. Um, very sour. Very sad. So that's a three-word review. That's all you need to know, folks. Okay. <laughs> all right. We'll have another cocktail review later on in the cruise. This was a beautiful moment. Dressed up to the nines, drinking cocktails with the classy pianist serenading us with an absolutely stunning sunset slowly setting on the horizon. What a moment. This serenity was well and truly sunk when Nettie opted to drag us to the silent disco in the Sky Dome. And someone was just a little bit excited. Yay! Silent Disco! My favourite! Ah! And this place was absolutely buzzing and the crowd was going wild to the tune spun by the two DJs under the dazzling lights. We danced the night away until we decided to hit the sack ready for our first day in Norway in the morning. Day three and we were in Stavanger and we were up bright and early for the sailing. This was clearly a gorgeous place and the sun was again shining on us. And with breakfast scoffed, we headed ashore. Immediately opposite the cruise dock is Stavanger Old Town. This area is filled with 200 year old white timber houses and is still a residential area. It's chocolate box beautiful and there are picturesque views everywhere you look. It's right next to the cruise dock so the local residents must load the cruise lines with passengers pouring through this exceptionally beautiful area. As most passengers headed directly to the main town, we headed into the old town trying to be quiet so as not to disturb the local residents. We walked through the old town and into the new and we soon noticed the abundance of sculpture and street art in the town. It's everywhere and excellent too with Banksy and Anthony Gormley also contributing to the town aesthetics. We soon stumbled on the town's central lake with its impressive fountain. This was a great spot to sit and plan our day. The main cathedral adjacent to the lake was sadly closed as it's being renovated. So we decided to make our way to the famous Three Swords Monument at Harrisfjord. You can take a public bus for 45 kroner each way from Olsen V Gate to Stop M and you get off at Madeleine Lorraine. That's about £3 each way, which is significantly cheaper than the excursions and hop-on hop-off buses, which we were told by other passengers cost £35. To use the bus, you can use the Columbus phone app to buy tickets and simply scan the QR code when you board the bus. 
from Man by the Ren, it's a very short walk from the bus stop to the monument, which is incredibly impressive with the three giant bronze swords strutting upwards from the bare rocks overlooking the shallow fjord. What a spot this is. So Sai, what's this spot all about? We are at the Three Swords Monument in Stavanger. This is famous and this is to mark the site of where King Harold Fairhair uh, had his famous battle where he unified Norway. Seems one sword in the stone was enough for King Arthur, but King Harold needed three. Hmm. This trip to the monument is really worth making, and there is a coastal path walk also, which if you have the time, will lead you to ancient rock art and standing stones. We however wanted to shop, so headed back on the bus into Stavanger, where we headed directly to a local supermarket. Previous trips to Norway have opened our eyes to the delights of a Remy 1000 store and with a bag filled with snacks and treats we then headed into Stavanger's main shopping district. And Stavanger is blessed with a fantastic range of shops to cater for all tastes and budgets. There are plentiful bars and cafes too. The famous colourful street is a real feast for the eyes and these gorgeous painted timber buildings are filled with wonderful cafes and bars with street art visible everywhere you look. This place has a wonderful feel to it. We found a nice little coffee shop where they roast on the premises and a bit more shopping before climbing up to St Peter's Church. This glorious church dates to 1866 and is simply gorgeous inside. Candles lit to remember lost loved ones, we headed for the harbourside area where we found a lovely bar. Sat in the sunshine, we soaked up the bustling atmosphere and supped a couple of Norwegian beers. Cheers Dad! Then souvenirs to buy and there was a lovely market on in the main square and cruise passengers were filling the many bars and cafes around the harbour area. It was really pleasant to stroll around this area. The ship towered above us as we mooched around the shops and market stalls. Some passengers had stayed on board to enjoy a quieter ship and use the facilities in the sunshine. This had been a wonderful day ashore in Stavanger and it was coming to an end and at 4.30 in the afternoon we were back on board where we took ourselves to the Keys for a burger and a fried chicken meal. Then we sat in the sunshine on deck 18 as we sailed away. This was chilled as we sailed past Norway's many islands and inlets to the fjords. We had again booked to see a show by the headliner theatre group. Greatest Days, the Take That Story it was called. We were greeted by a video wall filled with 90 CFAX screens. Then there was an announcement stating that no videoing of any part of the performance is allowed. Mm. So as we can't show you any footage, here are our reviews. So handing over to the Cook Explore chef aficionado, Nettie, on her review of The Greatest Days. Right, okay. Um, it was not what I was expecting, but I thought it was a very good storyline. Um, it was it was like a sort of musical um, and some really good dancing and things. And um, a little bit on the loud side, um, stopped me falling asleep when I was a bit feeling rather tired. But yeah, and no, all of it, yeah, it was quite good. Very different to what I'm used to, but yeah, good. Oh, okay. Positive reviews yeah. there. <laughs> Passing over to first time cruiser, Matt. What do you think, Matt? Wasn't impressed, to tell the honest truth, but I found it a bit monotonous. Uh, I've, I've seen musicals before, and I think the next right it is a musical. But whoever done the choreography and the uh, stage uh, conversation needs to think about it again, to be quite honest Ooh. with you. So I wasn't impressed, to be honest with you. Harsh stuff, seen, eh? I have seen a lot better in that way, yeah. But I'm taking that away from them. Like, they all worked hard. And... Uh, the songs were good, interesting, sort of foot tapping, you know. Uh, Don't take that away from them. It was a take that musical, Matt. I know, yeah, yeah. But uh, I've seen better. All right. I mean. Thanks for that, Matt. And now for the grumpy one. Well, I'm happy to declare that I've never been a take that fan, uh, and. I actually didn't think it was possible for my dislike of Take That to reach new levels, but that show did have a really good go at raising those levels. Um, not to take anything away from the performers, they're very talented and stuff, but there just weren't enough guitar solos or crazy light shows for me, and I really do need some heavy metal very soon. Right, so are you going to go and get the headphones out and listen to your Slipknot next? It won't be Slipknot, but it will be loud enough. Okay. So after the show, we hit the clubhouse bar for cocktails and a fun scattergrease quiz. Then house band Pulse fired up with a set filled with soul and Motown classics. During this, we enjoyed yet more cocktails. This had been a great evening after a full-on day. 
but bed beckoned as we wanted to be awake for the early morning sailing into Oldham. Day four was the highlight of the cruise as we sailed down Nordfjord into Oldham. Si was up really early for the sunrise over the mountains. What was in those cocktails last night? Then a spot of breakfast as we sailed down the fjord. Breakfast with a view, wow, this is one of the best reasons to take this cruise. We docked in Oldham and pootled our way ashore. We haven't made any plans or booked any excursions, so we took things in our stride. Immediately on the dockside are a number of kiosks where you can buy excursions and trips. There are a range of activities to choose from, including trips to Brixton Glacier, the Lund Skylift, various bus tours offering sightseeing, e-bike tours, and even kayaking and paddleboarding. We purchased tickets for the Lund Skylift, but there was a massive queue for the Blue Bus to take us there. Deciding to let the queue subside, we headed across the road and into the souvenir shops for the obligatory fridge magnet. We then followed the path from the cruise dock into Oldham Village, and this village is simply chocolate box beautiful. It is mesmerizing. Oldham is a very small village, and there isn't much there apart from a co-op, two churches, and the river transporting water from the nearby glaciers into the field. We decided to check out the two churches and the first white old church is the oldest of the two and is nearly 300 years old which is amazing given its timber construction. It has no electricity connected and no heating. It is a beautiful building both inside and out. A walk up the road takes you to the newer red church. Again this is in a stunning setting but sadly we couldn't explore its interior as there was a funeral in progress. We did though get to explore the wonderful riverbank area between the two churches with its rickety timber bridges. This river was a serene place where it was easy to lose yourself in these wonderful surroundings. We then walked back to the cruise dock where we boarded the bus to learn. Arriving at the Skylift, we joined what appeared to be a very long queue. It took 30 minutes to board the cable car. It does seem that if you coincide your visit with arriving excursions, the waits are longer. It was a five minute ride up the mountain on Norway's steepest cable car and the views from the top, well, what do you think, Nettie? And here we are, we've just come up on the Lowen sky lift and look at this wonderful view. Oh my God, how beautiful is this? The views were indeed breathtaking. We took our time and took plenty of photos before having fun in the surrounding snowfields. Then it was back down the mountain and back on the bus towards the ship. Back on board, we grabbed yet more takeaway food for a late lunch. Matt went and had a sleep in his room whilst we explored more of the ship, discovering more bars and the four screen cinema. He grabbed a coffee in the atrium, then headed up to the top decks to sit and enjoy a beer in the sunshine with a near perfect view. Matt returned from his nap and reflected on our day in Oldham. So how was your day in Oldham, Matt? My day in Oldham was superb. So we've had an incredible day here in Oldham and the sun is shining, it's baking hot, it's t-shirt weather and we're going to sit after the ship and enjoy the sail away. How's your day been, mate? It's absolutely been amazing. Uh, we really enjoyed the gondola ride and um, playing in the snow. It's absolutely awesome. And who would have thought weather like this with snow on the top of the mountain, eh? It's been that kind of day. <laughs> We've been throwing snowballs at each other and we're set burning in the sun. All, all within absolutely. about two hours of each other. Finishing it off with a nice beer, eh? Hey? Cheers. <laughs> So we sat in the sunshine and enjoyed more beers as we sailed away from Oldham and we were serenaded by local residents as we set sail. This was a lovely touch. Our sail away from Oldham was glorious. Cruising down the field is such a wonderful experience. Spectacular views in every direction and we sat for a couple of hours at the after the ship appreciating the rugged beauty of Norway. We could have sat there all night long but rumbling bellies reminded us of the time. So we grabbed a meal and started on the wine and cocktails. Around the ship and in the Horizon newsletter the Nicole Scherzinger endorsed shh event was heavily trailed. Can you keep a secret? Well I'd say they have because we had absolutely no idea what was going on there. It was more like a children's birthday party than any form of show. Oh well, there's plenty more bars for us to find and try. Anderson's Gym Bar was tonight's choice. Really lovely and they're still on the premises and we whiled away the evening here. It had been another brilliant day and Iona was proven to be such fun. We were loving it. Day five saw us dock in Ollison and this town burned to the ground in 1904 and was completely rebuilt with support and funding from Germany. 
and its buildings within the quaint old town area are of a classic Art Nouveau style. And it's a pretty place to stroll through and heading out of the cruise dock we realised that a German cruise ship was also in port. We followed the green feed through the underpass and veering left towards the old town area we had a really pretty stroll through the sleepy streets and past the church and up to a viewpoint. We're in Orlesund and we've uh, gone into the old town area and we've made the first of hopefully gonna, what's going to be two climbs to viewpoints today and this one is absolutely stunning. Take a look. Wow, jaw dropping it is. This part of the town was really sleepy and there were some spectacular views across to the island offshore. We wandered back down from the viewpoint and out onto the harbour wall. This was again a lovely spot to chill and soak up the city vibe. The lighthouse at the harbour entrance is actually a honeymoon suite for a nearby hotel. Sleeping with the lights on took on a whole new meaning here. Then we walked back across the bridge from the old town to the new town. Then we went on our typical hunt for souvenirs and fridge magnets. All the websites and videos we had reviewed before travelling had said that the climb of 408 steps up to the viewpoint on Mount Oxler is a must do if you're fit enough. Matt's back was playing up and he had felt unable to make the climb so we found a nice little coffee shop where Matt waited whilst Nettie and I rediscovered that we aren't as fit as we used to be. This was a steep but rewarding climb in the unexpected 23 degree heat and there are many rest points and viewpoints as you climb. How are you feeling Si? <laughs> But once at the top, the views are indeed spectacular. And was it worth it, Nessie? Well, we've made it to the top. Can you believe it? And yeah, that's what you get at the top, look. Yeah, that's around here. Absolutely beautiful. It's worth it, definitely. And on this clear sunny day, we could see right across to the fjords and the many islands offshore. The town Noddy train we learned also brings tourists up here and there were walking trails through the woods to the new town area as an alternative route avoiding the 408 steps. We got chatting to a friendly passenger from the German cruise ship comparing onboard experiences. Remembering that we'd left Matt down in the cafe below, we dashed back down the steps where we found him happily sat there with coffee and cake watching the world go by. So we thought we would happily join him. Ooh, what you got there, Nate? Hi there, I'm going to do a review on this amazing cake. Um, we've been in this lovely shop called, um, what's it called, Five, five, five Maniti. Maniti, and um, the cakes look absolutely amazing. And I went to the toilet and asked Simon for a lemon meringue, um, and he forgot about that, and he got me this other one, but it's called, it's orange and mascarpone, and it actually, it does actually look amazing. So. Has he made a boo-boo or has he done something amazing? Let's touch, just try it. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh, good, look it? at that. Oh, oh, let's try it. Oh, it's very squidgy. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, ah, that is delicious. So creamy and um, really orangey. Mmm, actually, I'm glad you went for that. Gold star for me. Yeah, I'm glad you went for that. Very nice. Yay. <laughs> With cake scoff, we continued to wander around the town with its pretty harbour. This was such thirsty work. Beer time. Local cans of Pills Lager and a murky but tasty mango IPA, all sampled. It was getting really warm in the town and before long another bar beckoned us for another tasty local beer. With the afternoon slipping by we decided to get back on board Iona and sat watching our German friends sail away with an ice cream. Well Vita Zane guys! It had been a hot and sweaty day so time to freshen up before hitting the main dining room for some posh nosh. Show us the menu then. The food was good and service both speedy and excellent and within an hour we were heading out into the ship again. It was rock night in the Sky Dome with the house band Pulse belting out rock classics. Made size foot tap anyway. We were enjoying wine and beers tonight instead of cocktails. A very nice change and Nettie found a cruise duck. Hmm, what to do with it? Then off to the clubhouse bar to see the Voxen's female trio. They were excellent. This day had provided sunshine, exercise, wine and beers, a perfect recipe for sleepiness. So before long, we were heading for our beds. 
day six was a return to Hogerson for our third visit here. However, plans were scuppered as Matt was poorly. He was suffering from sunstroke and dehydration following our day in Ollisund. So the morning was spent looking after Matt, rehydrating him and ensuring he was okay. We had booked an excursion to Scudentarben for the afternoon. And once we were happy Matt was recovering, we decided we would take the trip. Matt, however, didn't come, choosing to sleep and get better, ready for his evening. We boarded the excursion bus at 12.45, immediately outside the cruise dock. This was a narrated 1 hour 15 minute journey through Helgesund and into the island of Carme. And the bus took us all the way to the southern tip of the island, to the pretty town of Skudenshaven. On arrival at Skudeners, our guide who was called Rune led us through the pretty streets to the Old Harbour area. This was simply gorgeous and we were greeted by the curator of the town museum. We were then left to explore on our own for an hour. As well as mooching around the empty streets, the museum itself was well worth exploring. Like a hundred year old time capsule, these buildings capture the lives of the families who lived and worked in these buildings. These buildings were simply fascinating to explore. They'd formed a working centre for the town and local residents, and there was everything from a dentist to toy makers to chemists and the town's fishing industry, of course, all filled with authentic exhibits that brought the stories of the previous residents to life. Then a further guided walk, with Rune explaining more about the town's history and the design of its buildings. We then boarded the bus again and were driven to the Fisherman's Memorial at Firkenstead. This open-air memorial and church remembers the lives of locals lost at sea and it is a truly breathtaking spot. And then, sadly, we had to return to the ship. So, Nettie, how did you find your trip to Scudenshaven? Ah, oh, well, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a quaint little place. It had lovely whitewash houses and the museum was so interesting. It was great. Back on board, we were pleased to see Matt. How are you feeling, Matt? Hello everybody, how are you today? We're having great fun on our cruise. On our way back to the UK now after four days in Norway. Everything's gone tickety-boo. A few health problems this morning, but other than that, we're back on, on track. And uh, we'll hopefully see you on the weekend. Matt had really picked up after spending his day catching flies, the magical power of sleep then some drinks before grabbing a bite to eat. Afterward, we sat on deck in the sun as we sailed down the Norwegian coast. Just beautiful. And that sunset? Wow. Then into the clubhouse bar for some more drinks. The cheesy music-themed live set by Pulse was a lot of fun, and after we headed up for the even more fun silent disco, and Matt had found his mojo again. Tomorrow was going to be our final day of this trip. Sai? How are you finding Iona? Iona's been a real pleasant surprise. Absolutely love it. It's been brilliant. The food's been amazing. The entertainment's been solid. The facilities are great. And there's a real lovely atmosphere on board as well. And the crew are smiling and happy. Loving it. Thumbs up, you know. Day seven was a day at sea. Our day started with a relaxing soak in one of the many hot tubs on the promenade deck. Iona has a lot of these and they are brilliant. This was a really, really chilled moment. Then a late breakfast followed by a relaxing Costa coffee in the atrium. As we sailed closer to the UK, the weather turned and the sun disappeared as the ship became enshrouded in sea mist. This clearly wasn't going to be a day lounging in the sun. Matt and Nettie decided to visit one of the four cinema screens on board Iona. They watched the latest Hunger Games movie. I read his book, then headed to the Sky Dome with headphones and enjoyed a drink whilst cleansing his ears of last night's cheesy music. System of a Down in Nine Inch Nails did the trick nicely, thank you. And then my musical euphoria was well and truly quenched when I put in a dismal show at the Jukebox Hero Music Quiz. After the movie, we began packing suitcases before we freshened up ready for our evening speciality dining experience. Wow, I'm so excited. We're going to the Epicurean. But first, we headed to the crow's nest for a pre-dinner drink. And bubbles and cocktails were the drinks of choice. Mm, I can see where tonight's heading. Into the Epicurium, and what a delectable feast. Bread and Marmite butter, mmm. Moose bouche, sounds dead posh that. Starters, and I'm already stuffed. Wait, look at those main courses. We could be remaking the Mr. Creosote sketch if we're not careful. More bubbles, palate cleansers, oh crikey, puddings too. And coffee, and chocolate, and more bubbles. This was a feast, really enjoyable, and I loved it. So we must have had enough bubbles as we next decided to have a chocolate flavoured cigar. And only Matt smokes. Hell yeah, let's keep going. 
What was in that cigar, Si? There's some pretty weird goings on in the Sky Dome. Everyone's acting like a bird. Well, glad to hear we've not inhaled anything psychedelic, but this show called Rise is certainly a bit weird. Shall we just stick to the wine and cocktails before we really do start to hallucinate? This really was a strange show, but the bendy performers are sure talented with some incredible aerial work too. Not a Scooby-Doo what it's about though, but if Scooby did make an appearance in the show, I must have missed that bit. But half a sunset was enough to finish this incredible week on Iona. And our week on Iona sailing the Norwegian fjords was sadly coming to an end. So, first time cruiser Matt, would you recommend this as a first cruise experience? Absolutely, 100% yes. It's been one of the best holidays that I've had ever. You know, crammed into one week. I mean, you've been so busy seeing the sights and the great entertainment and food. It's been absolutely amazing. Cool. High praise. Thanks, Matt. And although Nettie and I have sailed a fair few times, we'd have to say what a great cruise experience the Iona provides. And combined with the raw beauty of Norway and its charming and friendly people, we can see why P&O positioned this as a new cruise experience. It's sure to get people to want to try other itineraries. Travelling home, we were content that we had spent precious family time with Matt and introduced a wonderful new holiday experience for him. And the Iona with its fabulous crew had done us proud. Thank you, Iona. We've made memories to last a lifetime. And don't forget, please like and subscribe.